Hi, it's Dave again. This is my video about the information I've managed to get from the RX-8 Canvas, uh, the codes, what they do, um, what I think they're used for. I'm going to try and say so and uh a bit less than my other videos. I didn't realise I said those words quite so much, but um, I'll do my best. This video is going to simply be just a lot of Excel, to be honest. So again, not the most exciting video, but to hopefully be informative and tell you about uh, the codes when you plug into your own RX-8 and uh, what those codes actually mean. Give you a bit of a head start. Bit of a caveat, I mean this is obviously from my car. Uh, my car doesn't have cruise control um, and it might have other features that um, your car might have. So, you know, take it as read that it might not be perfect. Some of the codes might be different for your car. And, um, and so just bear in mind at any point, there may be differences, but this will give you a pretty good starting position. At the top here, if I just click on A2, scroll up actually, there's one more line. I've just put a few brief summaries of what all the acronyms mean. Uh, so PCM is the main computer, EPS is electronic power steering, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, all the way down here, just so um, just saves a bit of space in the actual Excel spreadsheets. They just use the acronyms, and uh, you can reference them up there. What I've got down here for this section is, if I can select it, I'm just going to select that. It are codes that are sent out by various modules in the car. Um, as I said in the last video, each module sends out stuff. Canvas is a bit of a far and forget protocol. It just, they, everything just chatters continuously. Nothing really acknowledges anything else. Um, these are codes sent out by various modules. And I've got an output by column here. If I think I know what's outputting them, as I said in the last video, I've found out a lot of that by simply disconnecting things in the car. So disconnecting the uh, ABS module, disconnecting the uh, main PCM, and finding out what stops appearing on the canvas. Um, it's a very good way of deciding what the codes are. Down here, I've got a PCM uh, section that's selling you the things that I'm pretty certain are being sent by the PCM, mainly because they disappear when I unplug the PCM. So in my car, what I've got is I've just taken the PCM away completely. I've substituted that with my Arduino, so I needed to replicate the commands that were coming out of it. I know there are some people that have cut the CAN bus into two and potentially have two CAN drivers, one chatting to the ABS side and the car side of things so that they can keep the car happy. And they've kept the ECU in place. So the car thinks that everything's going along sweet as, sweet as you like over there with then another ARD connecting the dashboard. And then they've got complete control of the dash the way I've done it is a little bit more complicated because I've got the Arduino connected to the whole car, then any error messages are still displayed on the dashboard. I can't just turn them off because if I turn them off, they actually flicker like crazy because the device is trying to turn them on, it's trying to turn them on, I'm trying to turn them off, and you end up with this kind of flickering light, which isn't any good for anybody, especially not trying to get a machine through the MOT. So just run through these codes here, um, won't take too long. So code 81, that's 81 hex, is output by the steering angle sensor. That's used by various things like the electronic power steering and the, and the main PCM. There's two bytes, three and four, which is a value that determines left and right on the steering wheel. So as you turn the wheel, that value will change. Have a look at it on your car. Pretty certain it's going to be pretty standard between uh, all vehicles. And there is a byte two here that just seems to go to value 239 if... The steering wheel is centered, centered, should I say? So you can reference if the steering wheel is pointing dead straight forward. That's output continuously as you make changes to that by changing the steering wheel angle. You can't really output that on the can if you've got that plugged in still because you're just going to confuse things. Um, so I just leave that as it is. Code 212 that's output by the ABS system or the ABS slash DCS, depending on if you've got, got that module included in your car. Um, and that includes things such as the dynamic stability control management information light, the ABS light, uh, the handbrake, which that light is actually for the brakes failed light as well. If your brakes have a failure, that will light up. Traction control light and the traction control flashing light. Now, I'm not sure, you'll probably need to do a bit of investigation if you don't understand what bit three or bit four or bit seven means. Each one of these bytes is, as I said earlier, eight bits of data. So that's bit four of those eight bits is either a one or a zero, which turns the light on or off. I probably beyond this video really explaining how bits and bytes work, but um, Wikipedia, a bit of knowledge about that is, is dead simple. It's all there on the internet to find out. 
So code 300, that's output by the electronic power steering, and that essentially is uh, on or off for the uh, steering wheel light on the dashboard, telling you whether that's the power steering is working or not. Simple. 4B0 and 4B1 are both the four wheel speeds for the four wheels. I've actually got here the front left, front right, rear left, rear right. And um, oddly, one of them, uh, 4B0, is the wheel speed plus 10,000. I don't know if that's some kind of check sum or some fail safe for that, but they're both output by the ABS system. I assume the ABS system has the four sensors for the four wheels plugging into it, and then it outputs this CAN code uh, of the wheel speeds as they, as they move. Code 650. Um, you'll see some foreign language here. That's because that didn't actually come from me. Found that um, online. Uh, I think somebody emailed me that was their outcome. Not really sure what those words mean, but that's something to do with the cruise control. The reason I haven't really figured that out is because my car doesn't have cruise control. So I can't really work that out. But I'd imagine if you've got cruise control and you press the buttons such as set the speed, cancel, up speed, down speed, it looks like probably bite one controls most of that. And um, But I, I can't test any of that. Car, car doesn't need it. Well, my car doesn't need it anyway. Code 430, not really sure what that is. Don't know what sends it out. Not sure what it's used for, but it never changes in my car. And it might never change in my car because my car's never had a running engine in it. So I've had to do a lot of this without a running engine, which has left me a little bit blind to things like uh, engine torque and engine requests for bits and pieces, if it's an anti-stall, things like that. I'm sure that's all in here, but... I don't know because I've never had an engine that runs. So code 430, it might be engine information. Um, it appears on my can. It still appears even if I unplug the PCM, but I don't know what sends it. Code 204, again, never changes. No idea what that might be. Code 47, that's to do with the keyless control module. Now, this is the only thing that I've come across that appears to have a conversation. As I keep saying it, the CAN bus is just far and forget. Everything just chats away and nothing really acknowledges. But it appears that the keyless, uh, keyless control module actually has a, a chat. It has a chat with the main PCM. Probably a security thing. Maybe it stops you swapping out PCMs and, and bypassing the keyless control system. Not sure. But all I've done, and I'll show you in a minute, is replicate the conversation and my keyless light goes off um, and that works fine. I don't know if that's gonna work for every car. I'd hazard a guess probably not, but we'll get to that in a moment. 4C0, that is the odometer. That's output by the ABS system and just seems to counter one um, every, I have to look up, I, I don't actually know at the moment how, what the distance is. Um, might be every meter, 10 meters, it, it tricks a one and that is sent to the PCM uh, the PCM then outputs that itself again, which is picked up by the dashboard, which then increments my odometer. At the moment, my odometer doesn't actually tick over, so I haven't actually implemented that, but it's all there to be done. I need to do a little bit more on that just to see exactly how, how often that is ticking over, uh, what the distance is that it travels. Code 250, uh, as I say here, it's rarely seen. Don't actually know what that does. Don't see it very often. Again, might be something to do with needing an engine. I don't have an engine, so don't know what that does. Codes down here. This is all the ones that I've identified the PCM sent out. Mainly identified because, as I said, I took the PCM out and these disappeared. 201 is fairly important. This is really important for getting the electric power steering working. I know a lot of people are going to be very interested in that because um, the car's really heavy at low speed and uh, getting the electric power steering working is pretty fundamental. Two bytes here for the RPM. Two, two, uh, two bytes of 255, don't appear to do anything. Two bytes of the kilometers per hour speed of the car, and um, that's used by the dashboard. In fact, 201 is completely used by the dashboard, as, as well as the uh, ABS DCM system. Uh, you have byte seven is the throttle pedal, byte eight is always 255. A few calculations over here for uh, what the, you had to work out the RPM and the throttle pedal increments, they're done in a 0.5 percent increments up to 100 percent and that's used actually by a lot of systems the keyboard keyboard the keyless control management system the instrument cluster abs all uses 201 so it's a very important one biggest one is the eps the power steering you need to send it an rpm and um, it, I've, I've got mine set to about 900 rpm and the steering power steering just clicks on and works 203 not sure what that does got some values here don't know what it does. Um, I actually replicate that in my code. 
because um, I, I knew it was being sent by the PCM, so I wanted to just continue to send it out. Same with 215. Uh, seems to have a, a bite over here, Byte 7, which could be the throttle pedal as well. Not sure. Um, it, re it seems to replicate the throttle pedal, but I don't know why it would be duplicated or what else might use it. 231. Again, on my car, it never changes. So it's difficult to say what that could be. Probably, again, something to do with the engine. Same as 240, uh, yeah, 240 here. No, no idea. They don't change currently uh, when I plug it, plug in the PCM, but um, I've just replicated that. 420. This is used by the instrument cluster, and it's everything from engine temperature. Uh, this is the odometer trip, so you can tick the odometer up on that if you wish. Uh, oil pressure, engine management bit, and the low water battery and oil pressure bits are all sent out on 420. Normally sent out by the PCM. I now replicate that and just take control of all those. The only one that's not in there is the fuel gauge, which appears to be um, resistive based. Um, so it's not actually not actually on the canvas, the fuel gauge, which is a bit odd considering everything else is. 620, don't know what it is, but if you don't put it in, the ABS stops working. And, uh, and I have seen some other stuff online where this code this byte seven is a four, whereas it's a two in mine. Again, don't know if that's because mine's got the dynamic stability control. I know not all cars do. So it could be something to do with that. Not entirely certain, but that's um, 620. If I don't send it out, I can't get rid of the ABS light on the car. 630 appears to be related to the car being a manual or automatic and also the wheel size 106. No idea uh, what other wheel sizes you need. Um, I'd imagine that's got something to do with the, if you put bigger or smaller wheels on, you, you can customize this so that the odometer and the speedo and stuff calibrate correctly. And this 106 is the standard 18 inch wheels. And uh, I've just kept that as it is. I send that out again. Otherwise I start getting things like the ABS complaining that um, obviously it doesn't have the right information. Finally down here, this is the keyless control module, the chat that it does. I, I've looked at this extensively on the car and it, it just repeated itself um, each time. But if I remove the PCM and turn the unplug the battery, plug the battery back in again, I'd have the keyboard, uh, the keyless control module light on the dashboard. So I'm, this seems to be something that is required after the battery's disconnected and reconnected. Um, and it's quite simple. It seems to be uh, a 47 sends out this first line um, to begin with. I don't know if that's it booting up or saying I'm alive, not entirely certain. Once it's finished, put, uh, code 47 is sent again by the KCM and, um, and it sends a new code, which seems to be a prompt for the PCM to say, oh, okay, I, I can see you're alive. And the, my PCM replied with a code of 41 and this line. After that was sent out, the KCM seems to send 47 and then 41 sends out the this response with 47 then finally sending this almost like done request and that's it that's kind of the whole handshake so what i've done in my code is essentially look for this row 42 and when it appears i chat this 41 out because obviously i don't have the pcm anymore i have to replicate that i then wait to see this line of 47 come back and then i chat back with this line of 41 it only does it once. It seems to do it uh, at the initial boot on of the car or turn on of the ignition. And um, and I, I don't get the KCM light up here anymore. In fact, this code that I've got turns off all the lights other than I currently have the uh, DCS, the traction control light is on. I think that's just because I need to drive the car um, and it should go out. It should. If it doesn't, I'm a bit confused about what that is. That pretty much covers it for the information I found out about the RX-8's CAN bus in this XL. I'll put a link below to this XL. I'm continuously updating it as I find out new information. If you find out anything that's wrong on here or that you've got something that you discover that's not on here, then let me know because it'd be nice to have a master kind of XL of information that we've all found out. Uh, there's been various people that I've, I've dealt with on the DIY electric car forums and um, on various websites I'm sure you've all googled with bits of information and obviously my own research as well in here to compile all this together for us all to use you know I'm not not interested in making any money out of this let's just get it out there and uh, let's get some of these RX-8s back on the road for, for different purposes whether it's putting in a new engine or making it into an EV car
I was going to talk about the Arduino code as well, uh, but I think I'll make another video about that because this has gone on quite a lot longer than I expected. Don't want to bore everybody to tears. I'll make another video about the Arduino code that then controls this, and I'll show you that and pr produce links to that, and hopefully that again will help people in, in doing what they need to do with the cars. Subscribe, and you'll get a message when I've done that video, and, um, and I'll send that out hopefully in the next few days. Thanks a lot, everyone.